Uh, hey, Jim, do you think maybe you could just, like, handle this episode? I kind of got a thing. I got a... Really? I, I, gotta... I mean, it's, I'd, I'd rather not. What? Like, what's what's up? What do you have? Conflict. I, I mean, you know, lately I, I've, I've kind of been working on this whole, like, free the fish kind of thing. Like, I just need... There's a few parks that still what is have, that? like, my brethren and sistren in bondage yeah. at marine parks. Uh, around the uh, world sound, that, that's that sounds like it's taking up a lot of your time um yeah okay so I, it kind of has to i if i let go of the trident i uh, i all of a sudden can't breathe oxygen outside of water wow um, your dm really stepped it up a notch with that one that's some real enticing and engaging loot you got there yeah it's it's, it's certainly uh, intelligent for sure um so i don't know maybe we could try to work through uh it's like intelligent yeah. items and like next level loot to take on webb's dm please Let's do it. I want. <laughs> All right, Jim. Here we are uh, with another chance to talk about you giving me Black Razor. No, I'm just kidding. Mm. Uh, but we probably will. Uh, but today's today's okay. yeah today's uh, uh, show is because we still get all the time people asking about like. How to make magic items, you know, important. People are tired yeah. of them. I'm tired of ran rolling random ones. Like, sure, what's yeah. what's? I mean, we 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 we've done a show recently on like like a, you know uh, rewards that aren't loot to try to to try yeah. to help out. But we haven't done a show on actual magic items like this in a while. Uh, yeah. So the, I think the it's good kind, the, right? Like yeah, the, the good stuff. The, the good kind. The good stuff. <laughs> the Glen Gary, Glen Ross items, right? Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Not the random. Because when you're out doing a sit. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> but 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 items that aren't just you know oh you did the thing here's your thing but like items right. that can like spur adventure right. Yeah. Yeah, and I think like that that's really where it shines. Like fifth edition's a good ed edition for this, uh, because it doesn't assume access to any sort of magic item arrangement or anything like that mm -hmm. in the way that uh, say third or fourth did, or even honestly first and second, right? Like let's not At pretend all. that D and D <laughs> was you know, had a, a a too much magic item problem starting with third edition. It was it was there and earlier. So like mm -hmm. Fifth edition in this way is really really nice like that because there's a lot of ways you can get say a, a temporary magic item or temporary magic weapon to overcome monster resistance. There's a whole class devoted to handing out magic items, but sometimes the DM wants to reward their players, or their players have an idea for something that would be really cool, and and it's tied to an item, and you, you want to mm -hmm. do more than just like pick one out of the book or, or whatever. So to me, top yeah. of that list are intelligent items. You know. Oh yeah. Well, intelligent items are one of those things. It is it is a window for the DM to have further access to the players in a very unique way, is what I love about yeah. intelligent items. It's usually a conversation between the DM and that specific player, and that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, and But that's the great thing, is all the other players start to get a little nervous. When the, <laughs> when the fighter starts talking to their sword, and you're like, no, 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 it, it's talking back, like... Whoa! Right. Like that can be that can be something. I mean, they've been there in the game so long that most people are like, "Oh, you got an intelligent item," which is a different version of metagaming. But <laughs> if you play it differently, where the item only starts talking in dreams and 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 starts talking in different ways, uh, maybe mm. starts talking in as you are attacking, it leaves letters in enemies as you attack. And you put the letters together, <laughs> like just right. off the top of my head, like that'd be a fun way to like have an item mess with a player. Like, hey, you kill all these guys, and it was like at the end, it leave just your says hello, leaving you messages and the wounds yeah. you leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that's really cool. Why did you write hello yeah. in that person? Uh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't me. I don't. I don't know how that happened. Yeah, yeah, like intelligent items are one of those things that you can start out a game with. Like the PC just thinks this piece of gear, this weapon or whatever is, is just mu completely mundane. And, mm -hmm. and then some event kind of unlocks it. So you, you know, as a DM, you're not handing them this at first level, unless that's cool. Cause that's also really enjoyable, but like you're unlocking it as you're ready for it as a DM, as, as you know, the campaign seems ready for it. A lot of times you can give out a really powerful magic item a little too early and it and it throws things off for a while while everybody sort of readjusts to this added uh, added power source but it, it gives you a way to control the pace of how much or how little 
this magic item has impact on it. And an intelligent item is really cool because like you're saying, there's a lot of different ways you can interact with the player through this thing. You know, I've, mm -hmm. I've had a player who wanted their, their sword to have sort of like a, a soul stone or something embedded in it that had like, you know, the, the spirits of prior wielders that they could call upon and talk to. And out of that just sort of impulse grew this entire like order of warriors who, you know, they, in, instead of passing on to the afterlife, in, inhabit their weapons and then pass down their knowledge to the current wielder. And, and there's a big, you know, sort of ceremony involved in who gets the swords and, and, and the like. And it really came out of just this desire to have something sort of interesting and cool that mm -hmm. uh, was unique to them. And I just, I yeah, love very, intelligent items even beyond that. Yeah, it's very avatar. So what you saying? Like that. Oh, no, I was oh, just going to yeah. say that's very Avatar, right? Like being able to, to call upon former masters, which, is, I mean, it's a cool idea. And that's the thing is even that doesn't have to, like, maybe it doesn't give any real bonus at first, but you could still do that. Like in your rests, mm -hmm. you can, or in your dreams, you can talk to these masters and like figure out problems. And like also that can literally self-direct on how it, how it can grow in power, right? Um, yeah, yeah, certainly. It, it's worth looking at the, you know, the uh, the rules surrounding sentient items because there are moments where what the sword or magic item or whatever wants will come into conflict with what the player wants, and like the player needs to know that before they sign on to this because th these weapons, these items, can take control of their character if they lose a charisma roll uh, against mm -hmm. it. And depending on how powerful the item is, it might be able to really overpower a warrior that put their, you know, dump stat in charisma because they just, it's never going to come up. And, you know, you don't want to like accidentally fall into that. So it's, it's worth it to sort of like refresh yourself, understand what, what the limits are, where you want to change them uh, to make this something that's usable at your table because it's, it's really enriching and it's like such a great way to bring in lore and secrets and, and the like from, you know, your world directly into something the player is like super engaged with and, and is an important part mm -hmm. of their character. Yeah. And, uh, and it, it, most definitely, um, our, 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 our next kind of, uh, area, it's, it's very reminiscent of that, that, uh, the item you were just discussing, but like more of a, mm. an heirloom item, a family sword, right? Like game of Thrones was yeah. replete with these. Everybody had a family sword and they passed it down. Right. And you know, there it's mostly just Valyrian steel, but <laughs> the power of a, like a family bond in a weapon sure. or item and all the things that it could possibly do are yeah. just yeah. fun to think about and, and just ripe for adventure. Yeah, yeah. The heirloom is a good way of sort of thinking about it because it, it, it implies a special connection between the object and the PC. Although, in this case, it doesn't have to be a family heirloom. A lot of times you'll see these described as heirloom items or, or like item familiars, I think was what they were called mm -hmm. in third edition. But like, I like thinking of it as heirloom because it's something that, that comes with a, a, a built-in attachment to the player mm -hmm. and similar with like this uh intelligent item uh that 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 grew uh, out of it that's that's kind of what we did with it in terms of the sword's powers was it grows in power with the player's actions and yeah and in the direction of what the players expressed interest in and so this avoids things like you know you roll up some items that you know are useful for maybe a, a short period of time in a character's life and then you know, the, the player just kind of discards them because they upgraded them. But you've, yeah. as a DM, maybe put a lot of thought into what they're like and where they came from and what significance they have. Or the opposite. Player has a magic item they get early on, develops a real solid attachment to it, and then it starts to grow old. <laughs> and there's better options available, but they don't have that emotional attachment to it. Mm -hmm. Having something that's like, this is going to become magical for XYZ reasons, whether that's the deeds you commit and the adventures you go on will make it magical. You know, it's sort of a reflective of your heroic soul as it were, uh, or you like deliberately enchant it and seek out runes and glyphs and things like that for it. Um, or, or some other method. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's a way to ensure that the players have something that they're really attached to and is also tailored for them. And I don't think they need a lot of them. I really like one is enough like supplementing mm -hmm. that with sort of random treasure and other more purposefully placed treasure, but having one that's like unique to them uh, that grows with them in power can be really special. 
Well, and also, uh, especially if it if it has, you know, an array of powers, they don't have to cover the the, the gamut of things that uh, magic items can do. But mm -hmm. that is one of the things about you know fifth edition with when you have that uh, attunement uh, limitation, when you have an item like this, even if you make it cost two attunement slots, right? Like it it, it grows so powerful. Like if you're giving them a lot. Uh, of things that they can do with this item and they're really mm -hmm. engaged and they love it. Like that's, that's an awesome thing for two things. A, they feel like they're really, uh, you know, using that attunement slot to its fullest, but B, right. you can heighten the drama when you take that item away from them. Like, yeah, like yeah. you can have a thing where somebody steals it and you got to go get it back. And now you don't have all those things that you become reliant on and you got to really dig deep and use your character to its fullest. Uh, but it's just a, another way of you know, uh, of kind of infusing some drama. I'm not saying you steal yeah. it every other session. That obviously would get repetitive, yeah, boring, get or whatever. Yeah. But having, like, throwing that in there, you know, about mid-campaign, where they really get yeah, in the flow of it, <laughs> they, they, they've built up the reputation of them using this item. They're known for this item. And then somebody comes along and goes, oh, that's that guy. Let's take it. Yeah. You know, like... Yeah. Of course, that's the adventure where the bandits steal the item, and you got to go get it back. And yeah, yeah, that's, you're that's a that. A bit right? disadvantage, kind of like a new appreciation of of uh -huh. uh, some stuff that you'd forgotten about. Yeah, yeah. Once is a good is a is a is enough, I think, for something like that. But it can be very fun and engaging mm -hmm. uh, if if done well. But also, it could be a way to introduce a new power where, like, you get a ping from the item. Like you're yeah. like, wait, no, it it's over this there. How do you know that? Yeah. I know. Right, because you yeah. got the GPS. You, you you put the find my iPhone on. <laughs> that could easily be the 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 inciting incident, which reveals its magical nature, as it's like, oh, oh totally. yeah, they stole, they broke in, you know, because it's easier to steal from low level characters. Because <laughs> that is true. You know, it's easier. Yeah, to, that is true. Is, you know, <laughs> and so Orbe takes a you know, It's like, oh yeah, someone <laughs> broke into your you know your your room at the the inn, or like found your campsite or something, and took all your gear, and everybody's kind of like upset about it and then it's you slip in hey you have a really strong feeling that it's this way like you can't shake it it's clearly yeah. something calling you you know yeah your heartbeat feels like it's pumping out of your chest in this direction yeah. <laughs> like your heart right. is literally trying to leap out of your chest and, right. <laughs> uh, no no that's 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 solid um uh because yes i you know these items again it, you can have many different types of adventures and ways to to grow the power of this item and the bond and everything. Uh, mm -hmm. But another way to do that, and this is a time honored one, like you just got to get back to the basics, which is crafting, like like yeah. crafting items and making them better because you have somebody who's an artificer or they want to be a blacksmith and like work that into their character. Like, you know, this yeah. is one of those things where, you know, go hog wild with it. Right. Yeah, I, I've found in, in my experience DMing that it's very common that players want to craft something of, 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 of very much like value to themselves, like not like little trinkets or, you know, consumable items, but something that's like iconic to them, a, a, you know, a magnum opus work of art yeah. uh, that they, their character has. And like, you know, we could talk about what you are, which is like craftsmanship and, and actual creating a, a physical thing it could be enchanting something or or unlocking enchantments it could be translating a book of, of secret knowledge that gives your character secrets or lore and 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 like taking a step back like this is a this is something that you're you know some mechanical widget that you're using to express your character so far we've been talking about items but this could be extended to anything that's a long-term project that you do over you know, downtime and, and it grows with you as your character gains in power because it just takes a long time for it to develop. So we could be talking about relationships with NPCs or like building something big or establishing something like a social institution. So it, it's very versatile, this one. Um, if you can mm -hmm. find something, a, a project, uh, whether it's crafting or enchanting or, or something more ephemeral that your players are going to get into, finding a way to gamify that to have them make significant progress and more importantly to like pull adventures out of it you know to let it generate mm -hmm. conflict and and quest lines and 
you know, people who are jealous about what you're building, trying to steal your secrets or stop you, or you need special ingredients or something or training mm -hmm. to go get the thing and make it like, those are quests. Those are adventures you, you can go on and you know, yeah. keep the campaign fresh. Yeah. I mean, if you're building a new keep, but you didn't cover it with the, with your HOA on the dimensions <laughs> or like, if you want to have a drawbridge and like, well, you can't have a drawbridge actually, cause you're already outside your property bounds. Like yeah, that becomes a, a social adventure and an interaction, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Stick <hand>. Exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, Sorry for triggering everyone out there. In terms of feudal lords and property rights. Yeah. They were obsessed with laws and property rights. Surprise, surprise. So oh, yeah. those are the kinds of things you can do as if you want to keep it varied, you know, like for something like this, I think keeping it where the conflicts and the action are, can also be resolved in downtime so that it's mm -hmm. just something you check in with, right? You're building that keep and the neighboring Baron is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I have ancient rights to this grazing land by virtue of my ancestors just based at the battle of bullshit mountain. And like <laughs> you, you, then you, as a, as a DM, you present this problem to your player and then they they say well can i hire a lawyer to deal with this or or can i mm -hmm. ar arrange for some other way to, to neutralize this threat and then you make a check you know tax a resource and then get on with the adventure part of of the session mm -hmm. where there's you know fast paced and action oriented and the like it's it's possible for there to be these things that go on in the background of your campaign that you just touch on briefly you handle quickly with simple die rolls and it's it it's just it's there to add another layer to your character's life but it's not like worth spending a lot of time on at the table yeah yes because as we all recall in the battle of bullshit mountain it all rolls downhill <laughs> it all rolls downhill yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right all right. Speaking of reputation or legacy, uh, items that contain such or like they have like in setting like cred, right? Like I yeah. immediately think of Afro Samurai and the headbands. There's mm -hmm. only two headbands. Mm -hmm. You have the number one and the number two. If you're number one, yep. you're basically a god. If you're number two, you're the only person that can challenge the number one. And so right. anybody yeah. who sees the number two headband, they're coming after it. Like, it's just mm. the life you live, like like being the, the fastest gunslinger, but there's an actual physical manifestation of it. It's what I love about that show and is the mm -hmm. in, one of the main in driving, like, uh, you know, uh, pushes for the story of that of that show. Yeah. Like, and yeah. I think it's a perfect representation of like ways you can do that, like having things like even if it's just the organization you're part of. So you wear their pin, you know, if you're a harper in the Forgotten Realms yeah. and you yeah. wear that harper's pin. You know, when people see Absolutely. that, sometimes people just attack you. Sometimes do, or sometimes people, you know, are more would be more predisposed to, uh, you know, to trust you. You wouldn't just do that frivolously. People could attack you. You wear that pin because mm -hmm. you are pledged to this, this organization, and yeah. like the likelihood that you're just, you know, wearing a pin for the hell of it is like well, it's kind of low because people do get attacked for wearing that you know that's <laughs> that's those are the kinds of things you can reward your players with and it's a good way to like reward them with something uh that that has a, a tangible impact on gameplay but isn't like combat power and and, yeah. and you know like the way a lot of magic items can really magnify that and we touched on this a lot in that show where we're talking about non-material rewards for mm -hmm. uh you know for players uh, we talked about it a bit on like uh, presenting your setting information through various means other than just a lore dump. Uh, you know, expressing this through an item uh, is, is an example of that. And like, yeah, if the factions in your world, what, what badge or medal or something can you wear that signifies allegiance and gives you benefits? What kind of trophies are out there in the world that if you walk around displaying it, people are going to go, that, what? Like, I think in a lot of ways, I think that's why players butcher dragons that they've defeated. Oh, do totally. Because, like, right? decorating their armor with horns and teeth and scales signifies that, like, I killed this dragon. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, I did this. <laughs> yeah. Make, uh, so, you know, making, yeah, making an axe out of the, you know, the scale of a, of a, yeah. of a red dragon is, is a, quite a bold statement, you know? Even yeah. though you could have just yeah, found it. Yeah, it is. Yeah, good luck uh, with your massive penalty to any interactions with other dragons, but you do make a statement. <laughs> well, th and that's the thing, because uh, I remember, uh, I forgot which setting uh, or what game we were playing, 
where we were doing this. Mm-hmm. And then we interacted with some good dragons later on, and they did not want to talk to us. Because they're like, yeah. you know, those are my evil brethren and cousins, but you're still w- walking around in their skin in front of me. Right, yeah, this is still obscene and, and offensive. How would you feel if yeah. I had a human suit on? But they were brigands, right. though. They were bandits. They tried to rob me, but I skinned them and made them into my armor that I wear in my human form. How would that make you yeah. feel? And you're, as you're standing there looking at a Buffalo Bill dragon wearing a skin suit, it's like, oh, that's yeah. what I look like to you. Okay. Yeah. I get it yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it, 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 this is the kind of thing that can have a double sort of a double edged, uh, sword effect to it where it could be really great in some circumstances and really bad in others. And, and mm-hmm. like, yeah, everybody wants to have a trophy. And, it, and really, especially if it's like a legitimate, like this is hard to get. Like it's not just a, a thing we did because we wanted it, but we defeated this creature that was really you know powerful or rare or something like that or or defeated this champion or overcame this obstacle or hurdle you know you can reward that kind of challenge focused play with these insetting titles and medals and trophies and you know land between two rivers there's a you know a belt for the wrestling champion and you know yeah. a feathered cloak for person that wins this particular race and you know just a lot of really cool stuff that the player characters can display as items for themselves but also they have this like credibility and reputation in the world that says something about the character's achievements uh, yeah yeah and that uh, totally like when it when it moving away from you know items that are necessarily of power but more about that that does kind of reflect like this isn't a new thing I mean, we've talked about this plenty of times you're a history major mm-hmm. like People mm-hmm. do this. People want to stand out. So when their deeds are recounted, they're like, oh, yeah, the guy in the feather hat with, like, <laughs> the big billowing red cloak. Yeah, he's the one that did that thing, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. In Game of Thrones. Their, their, pension, their pension demands it. The, the people yeah, that have yeah. power in that, in, in that setting, which is our own history, um, mm-hmm. you know, reward those who, uh, who act, you know, conspicuously valorous. And this yeah. is one of those things where, you know, you'll sometimes see... Uh, people talk about well, adventurers don't make a lot of sense in you know in world setting because like how is adventuring a profession? And like there's a lot of ways to square that circle. But for me, one of the ways was like an adventurer is someone who puts their life on the line. There are people with positions of power in some of the settings that I have, not all of them, um, and they're going to look to either co-opt that adventurer after a certain point or neutralize them as a threat because they're, it'd be foolish to let this mm-hmm. person just run off and gain 20 levels without <laughs> either keeping a leash on them or, or doing something to make sure they don't go cause trouble. And like one of the ways you can bestow that sort of favor uh, is through like items that you wear, decoration, display, uh, items of characterization in, in the setting that we're talking about, which is like late Renaissance, early modern uh, warfare it's that these people who you know, borrowed money to raise a company of soldiers to go fight in you know, the Netherlands, they want to be recognized for that. They don't want to be nobodies. They don't want to be forgotten. And so they do things to make themselves magnificent. They dress in splendid arraignment. You know, there's yeah. other types of soldiers in the, uh, you know, earlier in the century who were allowed to wear whatever they want because they put their lives on the line and the sumptuary laws of Germany are like suspended for that. So they're walking around in slashed doublets and giant cod pieces and feathered hats and things like that because they're dying to the press of Pike. And like that spoke to me as someone who loves adventuring and playing adventurers because you're going to die in a hole somewhere trying to, you know, to a rusty trap or a goblin poison or demonic possession. Like when I come back to town, I'm living large. I'm, you yeah. know, when I go adventuring, I wear a golden war mask and, you know, like I, I'm going to go out with like decorations and, and wearing my, my, uh, my wealth, uh, for all to see because I earned it. You know, I, I wrestled mm-hmm. it from the mythic underworld uh, kind of thing. So I, this is, this is the one that gets me. You can keep intelligent yeah. items. You can keep heirloom stuff. If you give my player or my character fancy clothes to wear, I, I'm happy. I just want, mm-hmm. I like, I want to treat them like a paper doll. So. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> Something and, for uh, all types. 
Oh, I completely agree. And that's why I loved, uh, I, I'm drawing a blank on the book that, that, that kind of introduced it, but all those like items that weren't like insane magic items, just like the billowing cloak. You oh, know, yeah, yeah. that's like the Nigel uh, has those common items. I love those. Yeah, those, those, those just common items that just give you a little bit of boost. Not Nothing mm-hmm. mechanical, but you're just standing there and your cloak is always bellowing in the wind like you're in an 80s music video. And so you <laughs> always look epic. You're in a crowded bar, no wind, stale air, and you're just sitting there uh, just... Wear this hat. Wear this helmet. Your <laughs> eyes are glowing. You know, yeah, but yeah, I, I love those. Anytime a DM's like, have as many common items as you want, I'm like, are you sure? Because I you know sure? about all of them. <laughs> yeah, you wear these gloves and it looks that... like you have 10 fingers, <laughs> right? I'm gonna take that you pipe don't... that blows like mo- smoke monsters, you know, it's uh-huh. just it's pure ribbon, you know, pure just description. But like for me, that imagery, I you know, it, it is important. Like, give me something cool to wear, G- you know, give me, give me an item or. Uh, something that's iconic to my my character's class or their background somehow, you know, a cool, like just spending a moment to describe a, a shield that we find. And in this case, from a DM side, I'm not talking about paragraphs of background to the items you give. I'm talking about one to two descriptive words for everything, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and when they ask, because sometimes you present a lot of loot and if you describe all of it at once, it just becomes a haze get yeah the high points there's the xyz there's a cloak okay well, what's up with that cloak well now that you ask it's made of cockatrice feathers you know <laughs> like you know uh and and is you know preserved with you know alchemical treatments and the like or you know what's up with that halberd you know oh well it's actually like partially made of the spine of a bone devil you know like there's mm-hmm. things like that is what i'm talking about and then if the player seems interested you build on it and and let where the player focus lands increase the detail of it but it's about presenting something that's just weird and unique and yeah maybe they want to wear it instead of sell it exactly clothes clothes that don't retain the blood of all the foes you saw basically like stain resistant dockers you know what i mean that's all it is you don't have to iron them you don't have to worry about spilling meat on it it in the hunger games movies then give it to me (laughs) and one of my characters it doesn't matter their class i'll wear it (laughs) yeah yeah that's awesome (laughs) <laughs> all right folks yeah. well uh we hope you enjoyed that uh conversation please uh check us out on patreon if you don't already to get an extra podcast and we do have our our uh, backer kit uh for the kickstarter still available so uh follow that link there and you can still uh you you don't have to miss out on this item that maybe could become an heirloom item for your players i don't know Absolutely. uh but Absolutely. we'll see you next week Absolutely.